comments. Well, I'm sure you guys are asking what I'm be painting in this video. But I just want to run over one quick thing first. The guy that I bought this truck originally from was an old man that lived on a dirt road and never took this truck off road. And I just want to show you how clean this truck is. It's, it's crazy. There's no dirt on the inside of the fender wells. There's a little bit of dirt on the gas line right there. There's my air dog with the little blue hose right there. And with the leaf springs and everything is all clean. I mean, I get underneath here every now and then and I'll hit it with some degreaser and just spray it off with the water hose. But I mean, for being at 1999, the guy living on a dirt road, it's pretty clean. I mean, you see a little bit of dirt right here, but I mean, that's not bad. So you see how clean the rear fender well is. Now let's walk up here to the front and this is where it got weird. Still pretty clean. I mean, there's a little bit of dirt right there, a little bit of dirt. Well, look how much like dirt is caked on the inside of the fender well. So I guess whenever Dodge put the rear panel on, I guess it did a little bit tighter than the seal was better, but there's a lot of dirt. <laughs> in between here so i'm sure you're, now you've wondered what i'm going to be painting in this video and it is the inside of the fender wells i already got the driver's side off i still have to take the passenger side off this is it and this is the rear one and the reason i'm painting them is because they're really really gray if you see i don't know if you, the camera will bring it out or not but there's a couple like warped mark marks it kind of looks like from where the winds got on it i guess and it's like wear and tear on it I think there was, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. I think there might have been one more up top. So there's either like seven or eight little, these little plastic push pins holding these on. And I want to say there was nine for the front. There's a run little lip right here. And around over here. I hope I hear something. Look at this guy. This was a decade sticker I was talking about in the last video. He has a small one. But like I said, I already got the driver's side off. So I'm about to hit these with some soap and water, clean these up. And I'm gonna be using the same stuff as the bumper, or what I use on the front bumper is that duplicolor trim and bumper paint. It works pretty good on the bumper. And so I'm gonna try it on the fender wells. I've never put them on the fender wells before, so this will be the first set I've ever painted. And so we'll see how it goes. So just learn from my mistakes. If it sucks, it sucks. If it's good, it's good. You're so weird. But uh, uh, these are the ones off the truck, obviously. And you can see a little bit better now how gray they are. So I want to make this, or try to make this video really short and sweet. I'm not going to show the process of taking the fender wells off or the process of actually uh, washing them. I'm just going to show the process of painting them. And I'll probably do a couple of coats on these as well. I'll try to do like six or seven just because the fender wells with the rocks and everything that get thrown out from the tires might take a little bit more abuse than the front bumper. So like I said, I'm not with that grasshopper. <laughs> I guess he's gonna help me out. But I'm gonna go ahead and wash these up, take the passenger side off, wash those up, and I'll skip to the part where I'm painting them. And just really quick as well, these are what came off the fenders. I knew I was gonna go ahead and replace these, so I went ahead and bought some more and I have another bag as well. I just ripped these off with a uh, needle nose pliers. I just, you know, grabbed them on the side and just ripped them out. They're really easy. It took about five minutes to get both the sides off over here. But if you don't plan on replacing these or if you can't find any of these, I got these at the Dodge dealership. I think they sell them at like AutoZone and O'Reilly's and stuff like that as well. The thing with AutoZone and O'Reilly's, they don't sell them in packs like this. They only sell them in like a little variety pack of like six, I want to say. And there might be only two out of those six that fit your truck. So I got mine at the local Dodge dealership. But I know if you guys have like a fast null or something like that, I'm sure they carry these as well. But I knew I was going to replace these. So that's why I went ahead and just kind of like abuse these really bad to get them out. If you don't plan on replacing them and if you want to salvage these, I wouldn't recommend a needle nose uh, or needle nose, nose pliers. They have a tool that actually like fits on the side like this and you just like pop them out. I don't know the, the technical term for that tool, but there is a tool that they sell. I want to say it's like fairly cheap. You just slide them in between the fender and this little plastic part and they pop right out. So that's what I would recommend if you do not plan on buying more of these. But I mean, if you buy these, these were like, I want to say $15 for 50 of them. So I mean, not too expensive, not too crazy, but that's what I just want to throw that into the video.
once again all kind of clean nice bill stain and then in the fender well it's dirt again but got this side off now got a couple little spots right here i got all these little plastic pieces I have to get out we fell out of love like shooting stars came crashing down and we're building back up again now i see your heart see your mind see all you hide i won't let you go can't let this die when you lose yourself i'll be right beside you All right, this is about five minutes of just with degreaser and some soap and water will do. I still got a little bit in the corner over here, as you can see, to get a little bit of that dirt out. So I'm grabbing a new rag and then finish it up and then start on the other side. All right, guys, just a little comparison. This is the driver and the passenger side front fenders. This is the one that has not been painted clearly, and that one has about four or five coats on it. So I just want to show you guys a difference real quick before I got to the other ones. See, you can see them a little bit better now. I don't know if these are like stress marks in the like plastic or where this uh, stuff comes from. But as you can see, when you repaint it, you can't see the stretch marks at all. And it looks brand spanking new. So instead of buying all brand new ones, I decided to just go ahead and paint these and put all new rivets in them. But so far, so good. I'm going to go ahead and paint the rest of the three. And then throw them on the truck and I'll show you guys the after. finally finished it got dark on me unfortunately i had to take a work phone call it took a little bit longer than expected but i went ahead and put the last remaining coats on the in the fender linings they look really good all black and no stress marks not gray anymore so it's going to match the truck a lot better with the black wheels and the, everything else all the black accents it'll look really good 
I would say if you guys are interested in doing the same process, just to give you a heads up, the whole process with me taking the thinner linings out, which like I said at the beginning of the video, I just ripped the plastic push pins out so it didn't take me long at all. And so that took me about five minutes on both sides to do that. Then I went ahead and washed the back and the inside of the fenders, which took about, I would say about five minutes each, so not long there at all. And then with the whole painting process, I would say the whole painting process was about an hour because you got to take a break in between coats. I didn't actually film that process at all just because I was in the middle of doing other stuff. So I would just come outside, do a coat, come back outside like five minutes later, do another coat on them. So that took me about an hour or so. And then, oh, and speaking of the paint as well, I use the same stuff, the Duplicolor Trim and Bumper paint, the same stuff I use on the bumper. It took about two cans of this. I went ahead, it, it took really about one and a half or one and three quarters of one and I went ahead and just sprayed the last remaining bit of the can on the fenders just to get a little bit extra coat on there. I, I figured since you know it's all stuff's always getting thrown up on these that uh, you might as well take the little extra coats since you know all the rocks and stuff that get thrown up. So today is Wednesday I think it's the 19th. I want to go ahead and try to throw this video up tonight so I won't get any daytime footage of the fenders on there. But the next video I throw up, I'll see if I can throw in like a little 15 second bit at the end of the video showing you guys what they look like in the daylight. But like I said, if you are interested in doing the same process, I would say about two hours worth if you decide to take your time taking little push pins out, about two hours worth and about $20 worth of paint and you'll have it all done. So once again, thank you guys for watching and subscribe to see more. All right guys, I lied. This is the day after. I let the fender lining sit in the garage last night and dry a little bit more and cure. I put them on and they look a lot better than I thought what they were gonna look like. Get a little bit closer look for you guys. It makes the fender wheel look so much cleaner. And as you can see, I'm in a white gravel parking lot and there's honestly no white stuff on here. I've been driving around for about an hour and uh, I'm really curious to see how these hold up. Like I said, I've never, I've never painted these before. I've never used the trim paint on a set of fender linings before. But as of right now, I'm absolutely, or absolutely in love. I'm sure over time with the rocks being thrown up, they're gonna, you know, kind of probably chip the paint away, but that's not gonna be hard to just touch up here and there. But I think it's gonna be totally worth it. It looks a lot better. It makes the wheels pop a lot more in my opinion too, because that used to be gray on the inside and now it looks a lot more clean and classy. And like me and my brother say all the time, it's the little things that count. And the little things that make a big difference. That looks a lot better. Now, like I said, I think it makes the wheels pop because you're not looking into the fender well. Because I had like all these like sh stress marks on the inside where you could see and it looked just disgusting. But uh, the black mix looks a lot more classy. And like I said, I forgot if I mentioned it last night, but it took me about two hours to do the entire process. And I think you could probably do it in a lot less time. And the reason, I don't know if I mentioned it last night, the reason it took me a little bit longer, my GoPro actually died as I was doing it, but I was cleaning the backside of the rear fender linings and I had like little bits of rubber all on the inside and all on the top here. And I guess that's from all the burnouts I've been doing here lately. I've done like three or four in the past week. And uh, I can see these actually tires are getting pretty bald. I need to be probably looking for a new set here coming soon. But uh it took me a little bit longer to wash them. The entire process, if you didn't have to wash them, which I would recommend obviously washing because you don't want to have, you know, dirt inside your fender linings while you're trying to paint them. But the entire process took me maybe two hours. Like I said, I had to take a phone call in between, so it took a little bit longer than what it usually would have. But uh, to take the fender linings off, it took me about five minutes on both sides. Then to actually wash them, it probably took about five minutes each until I got to the rear ones. And those probably took me another 20 minutes. And then just letting them dry and then doing the coats over and over, which will take about an hour or so. So that took a little bit longer. You don't want to just do one coat, especially with it being a fender lining. You don't want the rocks to be thrown up in the first day and then it start chipping away. I'll show you the driver's side real quick. But uh, like I said, if you are interested in doing this, it took about $20 worth of paint and about two hours worth of time. So if you have just a free day, and you're not doing much. I mean, I definitely recommend it. It looks a lot better. And while I'm thinking about it too, a guy asked me over Instagram what the tinted windshield was like in the during the daytime if I get in trouble for it a lot. This is it in the daytime. I absolutely love it. I've had it on my, I've had tinted windshields on two of my trucks. I didn't have it on my last one only because my side windows were so dark. But that's 35 on the windshield and I have a like 5% strip on the inside which you can't tell. 
but I love the windshield. The only bad thing is obviously if you if bugs that splatter on it, it'll, they pop a lot more. The bug splatter. But uh, I do get messed with every now and then with police officers. But luckily, I live in Florida. They're not too strict on it. They just pull you over and just hassle you a little bit for it, and uh, they just let you on your day. But with it being so hot down here, like it's October 20th now, you know, up north it's probably cold. That's about 100 degrees out here right now. It's incredibly hot. And uh, so they don't mess with you too much only because our vehicles get so hot down here. And my dash is not cracked either. So I, I'm trying to preserve the dash as much as I can with a tin windshield. I don't have a carpet or anything like that like my brother does. But definitely worth this, what it looks like in the daytime. I wouldn't recommend it if your state's really strict. Florida it really doesn't give a crap. I mean, we can have our tires sticking out really far. I mean, you can go ask T. King Cummins, Dawson Howard, a bunch of guys that live down here with us. I mean, they don't care at all. Uh, honestly, I mean, it's like the wild, wild west down here. We can have straight pipes. They don't mess you with straight, or don't mess with you with straight pipes. Our tires stick out. They don't mess with you about that. I know in Hawaii, where my brother lives, are really strict on like window tint and tires sticking out really far, so his can't stick out very far. And while I'm back here too, sorry, I keep making this video longer and longer when I was trying to make it a short video. The ducket stickers I sent out yesterday. So if you ordered a ducket sticker, it actually got sent out yesterday. I actually just left Home Depot. I have the envelopes for the rest of them in my driver's seat. I'm about to send out like three more, but just to give you a heads up. So as soon as you, if you guys do order a ducket sticker, I've been telling everybody to send me a picture of it on the truck. And that way I can throw you in a video and show you what it looks like. I think it's really cool that you guys are, you know, supporting the ducket <laughs> community and uh, ordering stickers and throwing them on your trucks and ATVs and stuff. But to get back to the video, like I said, the fender lines took me about two hours, about $20 worth of materials. And if you guys have any other questions, you can always DM me over Instagram. I'm not scared to talk to people. And other than that, you guys have a nice day. Subscribe to see more. Thanks.